my YouTube friends, if you're a live streamer or video podcaster who likes to stream with a co-host, you aren't going to want to miss this video. Let me ask you a question. If you could stream or video podcast where a producer would automatically switch scenes to highlight who's talking or highlight the graphics that you're talking about, how much would that improve your live stream? It would also remove most of the work and allow you to just engage with your audience and co-host without having to push any buttons or change scenes. Now something like this would guarantee a much better viewer experience and make it so much easier to clip out sections for smaller videos as well. Well, I want to show you a very simple OBS plugin that can do all of this for you. And it's totally 100% free. Oh, and by the way, you don't have to have a co-host for your live stream for this to transform your live stream. That's just the example that I'm using today. If you watch, you're going to see all kinds of ways that you can use this to basically add a remote producer to your live stream. You really aren't gonna believe this, so you definitely wanna stick around. So you know what? Let's get to it! First, we're gonna need to install one simple plugin for this to work. And there is a link in the description down below so you can download it and follow along. That is the best way to learn. The plugin we're going to be using is the Advanced Scene Switcher, and boy, is this a powerful tool. So, what we're going to do is go over here to the Go To Downloads, and it's going to bring us in here, and we can scroll down here and see the assets that are necessary. You can see that it has installs for Linux and Mac OS, and of course, Windows. So, it's really simple. We're going to take this Windows. 64 installation we're going to go into here and we're going to go to our downloads and all you have to do is go ahead and double click it and you're going to want to do more info and run anyway and you're going to get an administrative screen here which you can't see but you just click yes and there you go all you have to do is next through all of this and then click finish and it will install this for you it's really that simple and you're going to know it's installed in OBS by going up here to Tools, and then you're going to go to your Advanced Scene Switcher. And there you go. We're ready to rock. Now that that's out of the way, let me show you how to set this up so it can change your scenes and automatically produce your live stream or your podcast for you. So here it is. This is a live stream, and this is what you're going to see. Now you see I have a bunch of scenes set up down here in the bottom left. You're going to understand why that is right now as I bring in my guest. And my hands are right here so you can see what's going on. How's it going, so, Michael? It's going good. How about you? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty well. And you can see now that it will flip back and forth between the two of us. But if Michael talks while I talk, you can see what's going to happen next. Yeah, How's so it going, Michael? We, it's going pretty I, good. I think uh, I think this is this has potential to really kind of step up the game of switching back and forth and not having to worry about if someone's talking or, you know, missing what it is that they're saying. And it's pretty quick, too. It really is, and I think it can act like a producer for your stream. Now, you'll notice that it will sometimes put both of us on the screen when we're talking over one another. However, there is a way that you can extend the time so that it will have that overlap where it'll keep both screens on at the same time. So it's not constantly flipping back and forth. How I set this up is the bare minimum. Now, something else that I really wanna show you is, let's say that you and a guest are doing a sports podcast and you have some stats that you wanna talk about or a screen that you wanna talk about. Well, it's pretty easy. With this tool, all I have to do is mouse on that screen and it automatically switches over to the graphics that I want to show. It's really cool. But the best part is that Michael can talk and it will automatically show him as well. Yeah, so as I start speaking, it will change over to me and then I can continue to talk about whatever's on the screen if it's my part or turn it back over to Michael. Or we can have a discussion at the exact same time where it's going to show both of us at the same time. Very cool. Yeah, that is actually pretty cool that it does that. I didn't realize it was going to drop down when you started talking. Oh, yeah, it'll do both of us at the same time. 
or wow. whatever. Now you can see that it's a little buggy. It's flashing back and forth. Because right, like right. I said, I set up the bare minimum that you have to do to get this to work. You have to play around with the time and all that kind of stuff. And inevitably it will work perfect. But let's say I wanted to just go back to the, our discussion. I can just click on anything other than the actual screen that I'm capturing and it will flip us right back to the main scene. It's really that easy to set this up. I can't wait to show you how this works. So all you have to do is go to tools and advanced scene switcher. And it's always gonna start out on general and you can see it's active, but I can click stop and it will stop flipping back and forth between the screens. And we're gonna do that just for now so that I can show you how this is set up. If we go over here into macros, you can see that I have a me tutorial, which is me on the tutorial screen. That would be uh, right here. And then I have guest and the tutorial, which would be Mike and the tutorial screen, which is that right there. Then I have both, which would be, uh, as you could see, both tutorial, which would be this right here. And that's both of us. So then I have the me cam right here, which would just be me right there. And Mike right below it, guest cam right here would be Mike. And then both of us would be the both cam right here. And that splits the screen. So that's how, uh, so basically this macro is just switching back and forth between those six scenes. So how are we doing it? Well, let's just start out with the me cam. Uh, basically, you click the plus and it's going to add one of these macros. And let me expand this out so you can see exactly how all of these are. You're going to add a new macro, so let me just go ahead and add one. We'll go ahead and add a second me cam right in here. So I'm going to go ahead and just me cam two. All right, so it brings it up like this. Now I'm going to add a new macro by clicking right here and it says, you know, if whatever. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to go with if and we're going to select the audio. And so the audio volume is how this switches from one scene to another. So if, and we'll select the source, my audio source is cam, as you can see my microphone is working there. Is, and if my camera is at 50% audio, then down here, we're going to switch to scene. Um, we're gonna switch to scene and we're gonna select the scene and that scene would be me. Um, and we can select the transition that we wanna use. In this case, I selected fade and there we go. So now this is me cam two. When I start talking, it will just switch to me. Now there is a caveat here. If we wanted to do the tutorial one, let me show you right here. We have an extra process in here. So I have my, I have my screen running on Chrome so that when I start talking, uh, and let me just go ahead and make this active so you can see what I'm talking about. When I select that, it automatically will switch us over to the Chrome. So when we look at the macro right here um, for me tutorial, it is constantly checking with this and process Chrome is, is focused. So when I click on it and it's focused, now you can see that it's running in the background. When I unfocus from it by clicking here, it automatically flips, flips us back here. So it's really simple to just select the screen and you automatically switch to it, select off it and you automatically switch away from it. Then the software automatically switches you between your guest and yourself or your split screen. So that's how you do it. It's gonna check if your volume is what it is. Now you notice that it just automatically flipped back and that is where this needs an extra thing. We're gonna have to click here and we're gonna go and, and you're gonna go ahead and select this, and we're gonna go into our process. And we're gonna select that Chrome process again. And here's where this is interesting, because you can see it shows you your current foreground process. So if you don't know the process that you wanna activate, 
you can go ahead and click on it. And you can see when I click on it, it tells us it's the Chrome EXE. So I can go and drop this down and find Chrome EXE. I can find the correct process that when that's active, it's going to change it over. And so I probably passed it. <laughs> Let's uh, right here. If um, and so and and in, we're not going to do and we're going to do and not. So if Chrome is not focused, then it's going to just have me and Cam too. If Chrome is focused, it's going to automatically go here. As you can see, when we go to me tutorial, it's if the audio is 50% on this microphone and the Chrome process is focused, then we're going to be seeing this screen. And if we go to the me cam right here, you can see that if the audio is focused and Chrome is not or and not, then we would see this screen when I click right here. So that's pretty much exactly how this works. Now we can do the same thing with both cameras by setting it up right here. And this is where you're going to have to play around with it a little. I found it slightly tricky to get the double camera thing to work properly so we're both on here. So you can see I have my microphone. So if my microphone and my guest's microphone are both at 50% and the Chrome browser is not the focus, then it will switch to scene Mike and I. Okay, so how do you get this to stop flipping back and forth constantly between me and Mike and instead just have both of us? The easiest way to do it is to decide which cameras you want to be mostly your full-time cameras. So if you're doing a podcast or a live stream with a guest, you would think that mostly you'd want the two, you and your guest, to be on screen more often than you know, having the individual scenes. So you wanna kinda of keep the software from switching you off of that two person screen and onto the one person screen unless they're talking for a while and you are not talking. And the easiest way to do that is to go in here and add a little time to this. So in this particular case, let's go to me cam and I can say don't switch to me cam by clicking this little thing here. And so if, um, if, I'm not talking or if I'm not the only one talking for at least five seconds then it's not going to switch and I can do the same thing with the guest cam so uh, we're gonna do for at least five seconds if the guest isn't talking it won't switch to that individual screen we're gonna do the same thing with the guest tutorial um, for at least and we're gonna do the five seconds and then we're gonna to go to the me tutorial here and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna add that duration where it should be at least five seconds before it flips over to the other screen. So now you can see that both cameras don't have those delays and they're automatically gonna switch over when we're both talking and there will be a delay for us to switch to the other scene. So let me show you guys how that will work. Go ahead, Michael. So if I start talking right now, it's actually going to go ahead and wait for Michael's time to run out, and then it will then switch over to me. Then and then there's both, both of us. Up. There we yeah, go. So, so but now what's gonna we happen? kind of have a conversation. Right. So if I start saying something along the lines of, you know, going on to a rant and really giving my opinion on something, it's going to actually sit here for about the five seconds and sometimes maybe a little longer, and then it'll switch over to me full screen but the thing is, when I'm done finishing up what I have to say, you're going to have to wait that generally about that five seconds for it to switch over if Michael starts talking. So That's if he right. starts talking right now. So even when I start talking, you can see it pretty much switched back over right away. But these are the kind of things that you can get done when you use these audio timers to fix the problem of it switching back and forth. And by the way, it works exactly the same when we flip over here, you're going to see that I'm on here now because it recognized that last time I was the only one talking. But if Michael picks up and starts talking at the same time, and then well, it's, that'll it bring us both up. Push us in. So that, that's a really, that's 
that's it right there. You kind of have to work around with it and get it to work, but it will work. It will keep both of you on the screen at the same time, uh, depending upon how you set it up. It's really pretty simple. This can be your producer without any problems. Now, the other thing is, is when I switch off, if I click here, it's still gonna wait five seconds for that state to change before it flips me over and just does the individual screen. So obviously you might want to adjust timers for certain aspects of the switch. And you can add more modifiers in there to really fine tune and adjust and get it exactly how you want. Now, I want to show you one other aspect of this that makes it really easy to see what the software is doing. You can click over here and you can have it highlight the recently executed macros and all this sort of stuff. And what that'll do is I can click on the macro and you could see it firing off with the green to let you know when something is physically occurring. And so that lets you know if you're having trouble, something seems not to be working right. Why is it doing that? Well, put those on there and then you'll see it firing off when it's actually happening. If I switch over here, you can see it's firing off on two of the three things that we need to have. But since Michael's not talking, it's not firing off on the third thing, so it hasn't actually physically activated the multiple screen. But, you know, it's really that easy to set this up. I know this is kind of somewhat more complicated to do. However, it is a lot less complicated than hiring a producer to make your streams better. So you can easily see how the advanced scene switcher can become your producer on your live stream to pretty much make it so you don't have to do anything. You can switch to graphics and whatever you want, add a guest, move a guest, have a guest wherever you want. And it's really just as simple as setting up the initial screens and it can basically do all of the production for you. I can only imagine how much easier it would make to create video content from this once you spend the time to get that flipping back and forth thing set up the way that you actually want it. It's really pretty simple. Now I do understand that this tool is a bit complex, but once you play around with it and get it set up properly, it can basically be your live stream or podcast producer, totally free. And really what I showed you here just scratches the surface of what this is capable of. It's absolutely incredible. Now, did I miss something here that needs more explaining? You should definitely let me know in the comments. And if you want to see some of my other favorite OBS plugins, you should definitely check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks to help make you a better live streamer or YouTuber, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free and it really does help me out. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.